us here. First and foremost, you know, thank you for everybody coming out tonight. I know whether you're on one side of the issue or another, you know, it means a lot to see everyone out here because this is our future regardless of which way we decide to take it. With that being said, I am completely against the moratorium in the town of Shenango for numerous reasons. Why? Why am I against it? Number one, the loss of revenue, the loss of income that we're going to see coming to this town. If you put a moratorium up, you're sticking the nail in the coffin stating very simply, we do not want private business in the town of Shenango. If you do that, the population of my age and you know the ages between 20 and 30, they're gonna walk out and leave. All right, I'll tell you a little story about myself. Two out of the three years, I've tried to live in this area. I love this area. I'd love to raise a family in this area. Problem is, I can't keep a job. I've been laid off two years in a row as a teacher. Um, I got fed up last year. I sold my car, I packed my bags. I moved to Barcelona, Spain. Um, I was very fortunate to come back to the area and land a job as a teacher in Oigo. Um, you know, with that being said, I have so many friends and, and even family that they can't survive here. They, they can't come back to this area. They can't come back because they're in a job and they can't come back because of the taxes. So to hear that the town of Windsor is collecting $23 million from a gas processing station, and, and not only that, that $23 million is being put back into our schools. Uh, for me, that's, I take it personally. And the reason why I take it personally is because I, I'm in the business of being a teacher. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to come to this school and have great teachers and to you know, share that with other members and other students in this community to keep that continuing is, is something I take personal. It's something that I think you should take personal as a board too. You do reside over the town and you do have a say in, in what happens here. Also with that being said, a couple more comments. I take a look here and it's funny because you know, four years ago I can drive in you know, these roads and I can see a lot of signs that say no blood for oil. You know, I drive on those roads four years later today, those same houses have no fracking signs. Okay, listen, to the activists out there, you can't have it both ways. You can't, all right? It's very, very simple, all right? You drive cars, you have heating oil, you pay for fuel, regardless, regardless if it's from the United States, North America, or in the middle of the East, in the Middle East, I should say, where, you know, we have people dying every day. You know, just take a look, we had another Marine killed today in Afghanistan. Um, I just want you guys to keep that in mind. Secondly, you've had four years. Now, I know you want to go through this and I want, you know you want to dot your I's and cross your T's. It's time though. Um, you've known about the same information, the same data for the past four years. It's time to make a decision and I have full faith that you guys will. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you for everyone else's time here. Um, I'm glad you were out to make it and I'm glad you were able to hear my opinion on it. Thank you and uh, best of luck. I also want to thank everyone for being here. It's really good to see public dialogue. Thank you folks for accepting so many speakers, being open. Uh, my name is Isaac silverman Born. I live in the city of Binghamton. I work with Citizen Action in New York. Uh, I'd like to thank the board for introducing this legislation, which is a very rational step given the threat that industrial shale gas extraction brings to the town of Shenango. Uh, I'm gonna skip a couple of parts here because they've been spoken about more eloquently than I could have placed it. Um, one issue I don't see talked about enough is uh, crime. There have been documented increases, and there was an in-depth study done in Sublette County in Wyoming about crime before and after drilling. The results are disturbing. After drilling came, there was a 270% increase in total arrests, a 293% increase in driving under the influence arrests, a 56% increase in simple assault, and a 75% increase in vehicular theft. I'll be happy to get you those uh, figures. These increases obviously outpace the uh, increase in population. It would be unfair to the police and unsafe to the community to place these issues at the feet of the town of Shenango police without any increase in funding and personnel. There are a couple of other specific issues I wanna, I wanna head to. The state has delayed this quite a bit. Regardless, some issues are absolutely left to the town. And as a town board, you have the option of taking this in your own hand, in your own hands. In terms of this idea of uh, natural gas bringing energy independence, I think that that's a little, I, I actually take that personally, I think that's offensive. Chesapeake and many of these drillers are actually owned by other countries. Chesapeake just sold a third of their holdings to Stat Oil, which is owned by the country of Norway. The country of Norway, which doesn't allow drilling in the country of Norway. So they want to drill here, not there. So I don't, not in my backyard. That whole 
argument doesn't really appeal to me. Uh, the, the last thing I want to mention is about the Windsor Compressor Station, which has brought uh, it's fantastic uh, dec in decreases in taxes. In the last four months, they've had two very serious issues. Most recently, uh, it was uh, the end of July, they were doing an inadvertent release of methane during a lightning storm. A 200-foot ball of uh, flame erupted from the compressor. I'd recommend talking to the town board about that and getting their read. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks for being here. Thank you for hearing uh, testimony. I'll submit uh, these comments written as well. Thank you. I am number 48. My name is Rick Tarnowski. I live at 557 uh, Dimmick Hill Road. My son, Zach, just spoke uh, two speakers ago. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of first-hand knowledge, if I, if I can. I was a former biologist with the New York State DEC in the Protection of Waters and Freshwater uh, Wetland Program, and I can assure you from a permitting standpoint, uh, it's not an easy department to deal with, and they will dot their I's and they will cross their T's. I have all the faith in DEC uh, that they will get this right as far as the uh, review of the draft environmental impact statement. I'm currently an environmental consultant with over 30 years of local water sampling experience and environmental impact assessment. I've sampled many water wells. In fact, I've sampled wells in Dimmick, Pennsylvania 10 years before fracking was even a word to be known about. And I can tell you firsthand that I had flame out experience from sampling kitchen wells from methane migration that wasn't related to uh, any fracking drilling whatsoever. I've also sampled hundred, hundreds of wells after fracking has been uh, completed, and I've seen no evidence of any fracking uh, impacts in any of the drinking water wells that I've sampled. Again, this is just some information from, uh, from what I've gathered in the field. What I have seen in Pennsylvania are short-term construction impacts, long-term improved roads, lower school taxes, and smiles on many of the residents' faces. Uh, to me, a moratorium in the town of Shenango is saying we're closed for development, we're closed for business, and we're closed-minded. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the sky is not falling. Uh, we have all the time in the world to, uh, to get this right, and I just uh, hope and pray that you do get it right. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have, uh, we have 51 through 60 here? Come up. Is 49 there? Okay. Good evening. Number 49 is Scott Eigler, and my family has resided in Shenango Bridge since 1976. I feel kind of naked standing up here without my friends of clean air and water sign, but uh, thank you board members for all the time and effort you have devoted and continue to devote to this complex and very contentious issue. Yours has not been an easy task, but democracy has never been for wimps, has it? Can anyone loan me a copy of Gasland because I've never seen it? Probably because I didn't feel I needed to. As a resident of a town which sits above an outstanding but vulnerable aquifer, I do have some serious misgivings about how safely hydrofracking works. Not the least of my concerns being exactly what happens to the millions, or is it billions of gallons of wastewater produced by the mining process? It also troubles me greatly that the watersheds of Syracuse and New York City were deemed off limits for fracking from day one of our statewide dialogue. Not safe enough for Syracuse, but okay for the southern tier? Is anyone else here perplexed and or offended by this insinuation? For these and other reasons, my family very much appreciates the board's hesitation to endorse drilling within the town of Shenango. Thank you again for your caution and for your ongoing consideration of the greater community. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Tilly Heisingdon, I'm number 50. I live at 11 Kelly Road in Castle Creek. I'm a niece to Doug and Pat Akama, who live on Nat Hill Road in Shenango Forks, and a daughter to Charlie Heisinga, who lives on Fort Road. They both are dairy farmers, or at least my father was, until his barn burned down 18 years ago in the town of Afton. At that point in time, the fire marshal said, should we save your barn? It was almost half gone. They said, 
He said, no, my son doesn't want to work at my farm. There's no money in it for him. 20 years later, almost, if he still had that property, he would have the means to establish a bigger dairy business, one that could incorporate his son and his grandsons and my children and the many other grandchildren that are involved in our family. My uncle, Doug Akama, struggles. He struggled for years to keep his farm going on Nap Hill Road. He has two sons that both are actively involved in running that farm, but they both have other jobs. Those jobs are to help support their families while they help their father run that farm. I heard people say they wish they could see more farmers producing crops and coming to Otzenango Park on Saturday morning. Some of those farmers are friends of my father, my uncle. They have farms in Windsor. They grow organic vegetables. They profited from the gas leases. They've been able to expand their farms to have lower school taxes, which will allow them to grow crops that our people in our town benefit from on Saturday morning at Otsonego Park. Farmers only want what's best for our community and what's best for our soil and our water and for the animals that they have on their farms. They have worked day and night to produce so we would have food in the grocery stores only to see milk prices plummet and that they can't hand it on to their children and their grandchildren. I have two uncles that came here from the Netherlands with my father. Of all of the 19 grandchildren that are still with us, there's two that still own dairy farms and only because they've become the big corporate farm with big trucks running on the road. But that's how they can afford to stay in business and have a business for their family. So I am for gas drilling. Good evening. My name is Mary Jane Paskey. I live in Badger Drive, Michigan. Um, I'm a lifelong educator. And the first thing I want to say is that I feel we have a responsibility not only to ourselves, but also to our children who are our future. I want to thank the board for providing the opportunity to speak and also for taking the, having the interest and the wisdom of becoming more educated on this controversial issue. I believe it is my responsibility to protect the health of our community residents and the natural resources, including our fresh water resources and air. A question I have is why is Skinny Atlas Lake in the New York State, New York State watershed been declared off limits for for fracking. What information was used to make this decision? Hopefully you can find that information somewhere and, and look into that. And finally, I respectfully ask the board to impose a moratorium to become even more educated on all issues related to fracking to better make an informed, morally responsible decision for our community regarding this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Danny Tosker, and I live on Port Road, and I've lived there for 40-some years with my wife, Pat, and we raised a couple boys there. Uh, this evening, we've heard a lot of numerous passionate and reasoned arguments, both for and against uh, hydrofracking. I'll try not to be redundant, because most of my points have already been made by others and made more eloquently by them. Uh, one note that I would offer, there's been some concern about the DEC and their effectiveness. Uh, the fact that there is a landfill uh, several, only several hundred yards from this school and within very short distance of numerous homes uh, should be brought into this because that landfill was closed a number of years ago. The town now uses it as a repository for chips and wood products, uh, but that landfill uh, has 
been the site of dumping of chemicals that are more hideous than anything in this fracking uh, discussion. They also are more concentrated. Uh, I have personal experience because I was there several times when trucks would just back up and dump this terrible looking, terrible smelling stuff. And the downside of that obviously is you going to have contamination. But why isn't there contamination in the school drinking water, in the water in this local area? It's because the uh, area was remediated under the control of the DEC, under the, under the auspices, I should say, of the DEC. This happened, I'm estimating now, 30 years ago. That's why we don't have a problem today. The DEC is more efficient now than they were then and yet they were able to take care of a problem that was uh, could have been a horrifying proportion. Um, the, concerning the moratorium uh, and the proposed uh, highway use plan and the proposed noise plan, I would like us to call them what they really are, though. Uh, they're uh, really not uh, delays. They're really roadblocks. They're just to push this down the road a distance in hopes that something is going to turn up that will sway uh, the arguments uh, in one direction or the other, and, and this would only serve the uh, anti-fracking people. Um, the simple fact is the town isn't qualified to pass judgment on the testing, the adequacy of the testing, uh, and the health effects. Uh, all they can do is go on what other people say, and the DEC is the governing organization here. Thank you for your time. Good evening. I'm Evelyn Yanga, and I've lived in the town of Shenango for 24 years. I came with a prepared statement um, with concerns on the impact on our health and environment from fracking. But I will chuck it, since many have already expressed the same before me. Instead, I will share with you some personal history that I believe is relevant to this issue. In 1988, my husband and I moved here as newly graduated engineers. We fell in love with this town, and we bought our home and land, and we still live here now. Um, unfortunately, back then, manufacturing started to decline in Binghamton just as we moved here. Uh, one of us lost our jobs, and the other had to do a long commute out in um, Cortland and then to Elmira. So um, we've experienced downturn, economic downturn here in Binghamton. We chose to stay here. And um, as I said, this town has offered a great deal of opportunity for us to raise a family. And um, Anyway, we could have relocated. We could have moved to San Diego. We could have moved anywhere to have better secure jobs. But we decided to stay here and to start our family here. So we made do and found other means of making a living. Um, my point in this is that um, if the goal is to improve our economic impact through fracking, there may be other opportunities that, we, that you could look into. Um, to look outside of the box, and that's and I'm thankful that you are proposing this moratorium so you can carefully consider all the impacts um, economically, our health, our quality of life, and I thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Sandra Malkin. I'm number 54. I'm from Wilson Hill Road in the town of Shenango, and I also moved here in 1988 through um, IBM. And since I've been here, all I have seen is an economic decline in the area. But I've also seen my taxes increase, which is very concerning to me. I only have four and a half acres, so I'm not going to get rich from this. But I would love to see Broome County prosper. I do appreciate the town board's efforts to look at the issues at hand, but I do believe we already have a town zoning ordinance that covers the issues that uh, we are talking about tonight. We also do not need to duplicate what the DEC is already accomplishing. The DEC is already analyzing impacts of ecosystems and wildlife, the impacts of our air resources, 
greenhouse gas emission impacts, socioeconomic impacts, visual noise and community character, transportation impacts, and naturally occurring radioactive materials, just to name a few. Please do not use our tax dollars to duplicate DEC efforts. I am also a local attorney. I practice in New York and Pennsylvania. I have clients in New York. What I'm seeing in New York is mortgage foreclosures, real property tax foreclosures, children leaving the area for jobs elsewhere, and I'm also now seeing out-of-town investors buying mineral estates in New York. So if New York delays much longer, it will not be our citizens that benefit from this. It will be other investors from either out of the state or out of the, out of the country, excuse me. In Pennsylvania, I have clients. They are having no problems obtaining mortgages on their properties with gas leases, whether buying or selling. My clients are not having problems with their water wells. My clients do have contractual issues with um, gas companies for not being paid the right amount, but that will be dealt with in the courts. I will tell you that I have a water well. I have problems with my water well. There is no fracking going on, but there still are issues in water that happen, and we have to regularly shock our well because of that. I, too, have a garden. I drink well water, and I love to take long walks in the woods. Please do not enact this moratorium. Thank you. Hi, uh, good evening. My name is Hugh Leonard. I live at 491 Brooks Road here in the town of Chenango. Sorry. Usually I'm yelling in a courtroom and I yell. Uh, I'm not here to talk to you about the pros and cons of fracking. What I am concerned about, and as you know from other meetings, I'm concerned about the mechanics of legislation. And this particular ca case of legislation, I fear that we're being redundant and opening up the town to potential litigation. First, we already have a state moratorium, so this is redundant. We already have a permitting process, and we have a zoning ordinance already in place, which would take care of any type of drilling that would come into being. So I'm fearful that by enacting a moratorium, as Mr. Wedelig told you, was only going to open up the town for litigation, which is needless. We simply don't need it. The only purpose of a moratorium of this nature, now that we already have the permitting process and the zoning laws in place, is to make a political statement. I would submit to you that it is not up to the town board of the town of Shenango to make a political uh, statement with regard to fracking. I would be making that same argument if the board was going to make a, an ordinance or a moratorium or a statement that they're pro-fracking. It's just not the purpose of the town board. You have the situation in control, you have it in place. Now with regard to the purpose of the moratorium, which was road permitting, uh, permissive, you know, the road stuff, I've been working with your town attorney, I've been working with the draft of that initial legislation, it's going to probably 10 15 hours. I think that you had a good road uh, use law in place. The noise ordinance would only take a little bit of time, and the light ordinance is the same thing. You don't need a year to do this. The state moratorium is certainly going to go well into 213. You don't need this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bob Citrak. 25 Bishop Road, Town of Shenango. Uh, yeah, that's right. I would like to thank the board for proposing this moratorium on hydrofracking. Hydrofracking is not right for our town at this time. As you can see from our neighbors in Pennsylvania, there's constant problems with this process. Water contamination, spills, increased truck traffic, legal issues of lease agreements, noise, unsightly rigs, just to name a few. Fracturing the deep bedrock, using chemicals in the process can't be a good thing for the ground that we stand on. This proves that there is no environmentally safe drilling process at this time. Some say that it would create jobs. 
Data from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics show that in January of 2007, about the time that the drilling started in PA, unemployment was at 4.2% in Pennsylvania. As of August 2012, unemployment in Pennsylvania is at 8.1%. That's a nearly 4% increase in unemployment. There has been no economic boom in Pennsylvania, and it won't happen here either. It's unfortunate that some have invested their hard-earned money into land as a speculation for hydrofracking, sort of putting the cart before the horse. But as in all investments, there are no guarantees, and the town should not fold to pressure and, lo and or lawsuits from these investors. We all swore that we would do a better job leaving this world a better place for the next generation. This would just be one more miserable failure we can chalk up. I guess our parents didn't do such a bad job after all. I'm from the town of Coventry. Um, the town of, uh, the town of Shenango is to be commended for their efforts to protect their citizens and their insight in realizing that the town board is likely the only line of defense in protecting their constituents from the hazards, economic pitfalls, and social downturn associated with fracking for natural gas. It is hoped that, the Shen that Shenango will prove to be a true leader and will protect its constituents, especially the children, by ultimately de declaring a ban on not only fracking, but on pipeline infrastructure as well, in addition to this moratorium. I hear people saying uh, the DAC will protect us. I think people ought to take a closer look at who's, uh, who's in charge down at the DEC who's creating these regulations. Uh, attorney Tom West was one of the primary authors of, the re of New York's original ask guys spacing unit compulsory integration laws and other regulations and amendments to overhaul New York's gas and oil pro program, according to information from both the Shenango County Gas Advisory Committee and his own law firm website. In addition, in the last 30 years, he has been an advisor to, represented, and defended the oil and gas industry on issues of legislation, compulsory integration, civil and criminal lit litigation, and investigations by the New York Attorney General's office. He has been working with the industry on their comments to the DEC. He is ca counseling several clients on steps to defend against the highly anticipated litigation, challenging the S guys, and is working with multiple operators in developing their strategy for permitting. He is defending the right of a landfill operator in New York State to accept drill cutting waste, despite allegations of harm contamination, naturally occurring radi radioactive material. He served as the lead counsel in litigation brought by certain New York industries, resulting in a declaration that New York's inactive hazardous waste disposal site regulations are invalid. Is this really who uh, we would trust uh, to be creating regulations for, to protect the people? Former, former Broome County Attorney Joseph Sluzar was quoted at the Natural Gas Nation seminar, which was co-sponsored by the George W. Bush Institute in 2010 as pleading with the industry to do more to promote itself. He also wrote a guest article encouraging the industry to promise jobs in the gas and the shale fields and enlist the aid of organized labor due to its vast political clout in New York State. He thought it a positive that the industry had lobbyists in Albany and had finally done TV ads, but urged them to pay attention to local po politics and people. The fox is guarding the, the fox is guarding the hen house. Thank you. Did we get uh, sixty-one through seventy up? Uh, 
Good afternoon. Frank Zimitrowitz. Uh, I live on Wilson Hill Road, 36 years, blah, blah, blah. Property on Dorman Road, blah, blah, blah. Look at guys. I think what's important, first of all, it's nice to listen to people from Bradford County, Susquehanna County, Town of Fenton. Look at this is Town of Shenango business. First thing we should have done at the door is show me your ID, where are you from? This is our business. I'm a taxpayer, a taxpayer here. We should be listening to us. We are the taxpayers, it's important. I'm a civil engineer, environmentalist, all that stuff. Blah, blah, blah. What's more important is we got to get it right. I'm against local law number three. We still have to do it right. DEC is well qualified to do this. Let's them do it. I don't think the town board, yeah, I think we're letting a can of worms open right now. You're going to have to make some hard decisions. You're going to make me mad, but there's the environmental people out here, you're going to make them mad. You're going to put my neighbor against me because I'm in favor. I say, let's just drop it. Let's have DEC do it. You guys are going to set a face and a tone for our town. And I'm going to be upset. I've heard about 30 people that will be upset with you people. You're going to favor 30 other people. But you're going to have to live with us. I've been here 35 years. I'm not going to let up on this. We have the right to control our land, do it our way. Now, let's, let's do it in a safe way. We're all for that. But let's not be making enemies, because that's what we're doing right now. I'm 61, uh, Marina Gans, 26 Frederick Road, 35 year resident. I'd like to thank you for letting me speak tonight, and I'd like to really congratulate you on having the courage to call for this moratorium for the town of Shenango. I strongly support the town council adopting a one-year moratorium on fracking. One key reason is the moratorium will provide time, time to better understand questions related to fracking safety before moving forward. The gas industries and others claim the entire process associated with hydraulic fracture and gas drilling is very safe. If that is so true, please consider the following questions. Think about this. Why would an industry that is so safe need to be granted federal exemptions from portions of the Clean Water Act, the Clean Drinking Water Act, and the Clean Air Act? Think about this. Why would an industry that is so safe need non-disclosure agreements in exchange for water deliveries, property damage settlements, or liability settlements? Why, if the instances of harm are so infrequent, is the industry unwilling to disclose all the problems that have occurred? Think about this. Why would an industry that is so safe be so unwilling to disclose all chemicals expected to be used and used during a drilling and fracking process? Is it really because of proprietary business advantages or is it for other reasons? Think about this. Why would an industry that is so safe not agree to a marker in fracking fluids that would help prove whether well water contamination is caused by fracking or not? Think about this. Why would an industry that is so safe not be able to secure insurance that would make anyone who is injured by the process whole. How is it that Nationwide studied the gas drilling and decided not to cover gas drilling related activities, even though Nationwide knows that not doing so will negatively impact both current and future business? And think about this. Why would an industry that is so safe be unwilling to create or support a fund that would make anyone who's injured whole and help reassure a skeptical public. After all, the cost should be low, right? And think about this. Why would an industry that is so safe resist calls for an independent health impact assessment, even though the Medical Society of New York State 
and medical societies of at least 12 counties have requested such a study. Why would the industry that is so safe be prohibited by the DEC from drilling in the New York City and Syracuse watersheds due Thank to you. I'm Paul, Paul Kiefel, number 62. Yeah, just like everybody. Um, we own, we have a home over here at 1154 River Road. We own a number of rental properties. In this area, we own some properties out of state. Um, you've heard it all tonight. I appreciate your patience. I mean, the DEC has got it covered. I don't, can't see any reason why you need to add a moratorium on top of what they're doing. Uh, school taxes, and I've got school tax bills on my desk right now that I had to delay paying. I'm going to have to pull money in from my other business out of state to pay the New York State school taxes. That's a problem. New York State is overtaxed, business unfriendly. That's pretty common knowledge. I don't think you want the town of Shenango to be less friendly to business than New York State. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I'd really like to thank you for considering this moratorium and the thoughts of all the people in the town of Shenango and what's best for their welfare. I would also like you to consider putting this very important issue up for a vote of the people. I feel very strongly against hydrofracking because clean water is the basic element of survival. You can make a lot of money on the gas industry, but the fact is money will not sustain you longer than three days without clean water. This article states that water managers in at least 36 states in the U.S. expect water shortages to occur over the next few years, and that's according to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA website. I would like to that to be looked into. <clears throat> Clean water will be a number one commodity worth more than gold because everyone needs it to live. New York can capitalize on that. The fact is, even with the gas industry, PA's economy is still struggling. Recently, Scranton was in the newspaper as the first city in our region to declare bankruptcy. Also from PA, we see safe, responsible drilling is not without accidents. We know the unsinkable ship sank, the spaceship Challenger exploded, and horrific oil spill in the Gulf, y'all watched. The fact is the risks involved with gas industry are so great nationwide other insurance agencies won't cover it. Water isn't the only concern I haven't heard yet. The Earth is on a del delicate balance orbiting our sun. If we keep extracting from its core, we change the composition of it. New York lies on a very large fault line that we do not need to activate. I say let sleeping dogs lie. We do not need earthquakes. We do not need more dirty fossil fuels of the past. We need to get out of the dark ages. We need to move forward with clean, renewable energy. Thank you. My name is uh, David Menkello. I am here this evening with my wife Barbara. We live at 113 Wilson Hill Road in the town of Shenango. We know that the land between us and Smith Hill Road has been leased for hydraulic drilling. And as residents and homeowners, we are extremely concerned about the negative impact this activity will have on our home, our lives, and our area. We feel that bringing this drilling technique with all of the heavy industry and environmental risks that go along with it into a small community like ours 
is just irresponsible. We know from a petition drive against hydraulic fracking that as many as 80% of the people who live here are against it. We can only hope that the will of the majority will be the deciding factor here, and we are 100% in favor of a moratorium. And we thank you for the opportunity to make our concerns known. Thank you. Thank you. 66, 67. Uh, Jan Houlihan, Denfield Road. Um, much of what I wanted to say, almost everything I wanted to say has been said already, so I'll be brief. Um, my husband and I are opposed to hydrofracking and I'm not here to change anybody's mind because no one's going to change mine. Um, but I just want to, because it's public comment, I wanted to tell you how we feel about this. We bought our house nearly 11 years ago. We didn't, when we, re we located here from out of the area, we were warned about cancer cluster and Hill Hillcrest. We were warned about Endicott. We were, you know, we tried to find a place where we could safely raise our children and now I feel like that is threatened and I feel like an animal in a trap because so many of my neighbors have gas leases will just be like, will be a sandwich and there's nowhere to go. And like other people who have spoken, we have a lot invested in our home and it may not be worth much. And I just hope that my children can grow up and move away. I tell them now, move away. Don't even try to stay here. And it's sad because it's a nice place to live. Um, one comment, um, I just want to thank you guys for listening. And I have to say, I do think that you're attentive. You look at people. Mr. Snowpack, I hope I say that right. You thank people. You have very good manners. Your mom did a good job. Um, and I'm just grateful for the opportunity to, to let you guys know this is how I feel. Thanks. My mother brought me up that way. Yeah. Okay, 68, 69. 71 through 80, please. I forgot you. all the comments made by people coming, speaking their heart, really pouring out their frustration, their fear. We live in hard times, very hard times. Um, it's not unreasonable for people to think, you know, well, gee, if this is a chance to make money. But sometimes we have to look beyond now and look into the future. This weekend, I had, a, 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 I called it an estate sale. Everybody knew it was actually a garage sale. So that I could pay for the chimney work that was done last week. I'm a nurse. That's actually why I'm here. I'm here to speak for the children. We had some people talk about Windsor. I want to tell you something about Windsor. 14 years ago, they screwed up somehow because we have 13 year olds, three of them, 13 year olds with something called mitochondrial disease. I'm a nurse, I'd never heard of it before. It's neurological damage. And this past winter, I took care of a child who has neurological damage. He can't close his eyes, a baby can't close his eyes, doesn't close his mouth, can't use his arms, his parents dream. Is now hurting. This is our state. This is our county. We live here. But we don't own this land. This land is the children's land. This land belongs to the future. And if we just think about 
easy solutions to today's problems. We're going to stop the children's future. And we don't have that right. Whenever people ask, stop looking at the problem. You're opening a can of worms. Trust you're on the right track. I commend every one of you for taking the time to stop to deliberate. This is what intelligent people do. We sit and we look at the problem, but with all our being. And I'm, I'm thankful to be part of a community that's willing to do that and not just jump the gun. Good luck to all of you. Snyder from Town of Sanford, 73, and uh, I, I'd really hate to be in your shows, cause, shoes because no matter what you decide, I, I can't see how everybody would be happy with the decision. Um, I, obviously, there's serious economic problems in the southern tier, and I don't see a solution. And the dairy farmers, all the dairy farmers I know, are suffering terribly as far as they being economically viable. And they're looking for the best way out, which they see is getting lease money from or through hydrofracking. Now, again, I'd like to stress I appreciate you taking the time to hear everybody talk. I should mention that in the town of Samford, they passed a resolution which basically barred all discussion on ga natural gas development from here till when the S guys finally gets approved, which I am strongly against their action. Um, so I guess this is the only place I can tell them that. Um, part of, I'm not here to express my opinion. I'm trying to help you because obviously I'm from the town of Sanford. I think the real question is, is, do you know, have you really been informed about what's going on? And all I could do is give you examples of things that I studied and I found out personally. And I'll give some examples. In Truthland, they talk a lot about Here's an example, Frack Focus. Frack Focus is supposed to be a site that documents the chemicals that are in, that are used in the fracking. On the Depew's well site, there are 10 uh, drill, uh, wells drilled, but only five of those list what's being used. Now, there's a, um, I don't, obviously I'm running out of time, but radium in Pennsylvania is being tested from what I'm reading here every five years in the wastewater facilities. Some haven't tested in this 2011 report since 2003. Uh, radium from the EPA is at a lethality, or not a lethality, but you have a statistical cancer rate at five picocuries. Now, radium is per gram. That means a trillion liters of water could be contaminated with one gram. Is that a trillion, right? Seventy-four. Good evening, Steve Parmeter, 735 Brosman Road, Binghamton, New York. I'd like to voice my opposition to the moratorium. I spoke to you previously uh, at another town board meeting. Um, based on my discussion with Mr. Herbler, Herbler, uh, we don't need a moratorium. We already have a law on the books that requires someone to get a special permit in order to drill. 
So this is redundant. We don't need it. And we've heard other testimony from people saying they would be putting up a sign that Shenango's closed for business. There's another thing I'd like to look at. In the past hundred years, the development in Broome County has involved IBM, Endicott Johnson, and several uh, defense contractors. If we could go back to when they first started with the foreknowledge of not only the tremendous economic development that they all spurred, but as well as the pollution that accompanied them, especially IBM, towards the end, Given, if you were given the power, the same power that you have right now to start moratoriums and stop this whole natural gas thing in its tracks, would you say no to any one of those businesses from starting up, knowing all the economic impact they have on the area and the jobs that they helped create? I hope not. So, uh, again, please vote no on the moratorium. Thank you. Uh, Earl Hartson, 20 Pembroke Drive. I'd like to thank the board for taking the prudent step of proposing the moratorium on high volume horizontal slip water hydraulic fracturing in the town of Shenango. The moratorium will afford the town board time to decide how they want to prepare for this proposed heavy industrial process within the town. The town board has the opportunity and the legal authority to determine through land use regulations whether hydrofracking should be allowed within the town and if so, where within the town this activity would be appropriate. All other industrial activity is governed by local zoning laws that determine what kinds of activities are allowed and where they are allowed in order to segregate uses that are incompatible. These laws offer homeowners a degree of protection from being subjected to activities that would negative, negatively impact their property values and their right to the quiet enjoyment of the place they have chosen to locate their home. In Pennsylvania and Ohio, laws have been enacted to strip local municipalities of their zoning rights with regard to gas growth. Thankfully, in New York, the concept of home rule has thus far been upheld within the court system. This gives you, the town board, the opportunity to have a say in the future direction of the town of Shenango with regard to shale gas extraction. You have a responsibility to take the necessary steps to protect the health and welfare of the residents of the town. If you choose to do nothing, then whatever guidelines the DEC comes up with will dictate how development proceeds. Just because a practice is deemed allowable under DEC regulations does not mean that it is desirable within a residential setting. If you choose to take no action to mitigate the undesirable impacts of high volume horizontal slip water hydraulic fracturing, then you relegate the citizens of the town of Shenango to living within a heavily industrialized zone, essentially living within a gas field. I strongly approve passing the proposed moratorium, then use this time to carefully consider the type of future we want for the town of Shenango. Consider the increased truck traffic with its attendant degradation in air quality, Consider the increased methane releases into the atmosphere. Consider the increased erosion and sedimentation and loss of wildlife habitat due to the clearing of land for well pads, access roads, gathering lines, staging areas, and compressor stations. Consider the problem of what to do with the fracking waste. Consider the increased probability of accidents and surface spills. And consider the long-term cumul cumulative effects on human health and on the environment. Is this compatible with your vision for the town? I urge you to pass the moratorium and then proceed with caution. Thank you. Thank you. Number 76. Good evening. Thank you for holding this meeting. I'm Earl Colley. I'm the Vice President of the Central New York Land Owners Coalition. Uh, on the I'm not going to speak on the pros and cons of gas drilling. You've heard them all, you've heard them all a million times. My big suggestion is read the SGEIS, the original one, and then look for the changes that they're making. Uh, on the mechanics of this moratorium, uh, I know the attorney that has drafted these. He has a wonderful track record. Two towns are being sued, driving in Middlefield. 
And there's a court case right now in Binghamton. Uh, in his own words, uh, this moratorium cannot be uh, arbitrary or capricious. With that in mind, I want to know how much taxpayer money you are going to put in on a line item in this year's budget to do the study and research that is required by the moratorium. Uh, one other thing, I hear a lot of the complaints about the DEC. Joseph Martins is the commissioner. Do you know what he did before he became DEC commissioner? He was the head of the Catskill Mountains. He was a very, very environmentally pro-group. If you think for one minute somebody that was the president or the leader of the Catskill Mountain County, uh, co uh, keepers are going to sit there and allow the land to be decimated. Yeah, we love the big company. Thank you very much. Chris Berger, Town of Parker, your neighbor. An overwhelming majority of the people I talk to want science to decide if gas drilling should go forward, and if allowed to go forward, how it should be done. A goodly number of people on both sides of the issue are definitely afraid that this will not be, it will not be science, but politics that will decide. We have already witnessed times when this has occurred. In principle, most people agree that it should be the state to decide if gas drilling should go forward, and the state DC should decide how gas drilling should be done, and to a certain degree where, in terms of setbacks from water supplies and such. Most people, including the courts, and it seems even the governor, agree that the town should be determine where gas drilling should occur, and if it fits with the character of the community. Towns have a long tradition making such decisions. It is wise and prudent to hope for the best and plan for the worst. Given all the uncertainty, especially when it comes to whether or not this decision will be a political or scientific decision, given the fact that the town will not really know what it is facing until regulations are set, given the fact that the only thing certain these days in terms of timing is that timing is uncertain, my advice to the town would be to pass a moratorium, but set not for a year from now, but from a year when the regulations come out. In that jump, at that juncture, you will be better able to assess all these things, especially whether decisions were based on science or politics. Hopefully at that point, you will have an open, honest dialogue with your citizens over whether or not drilling is a good fit for your community community. Now I am intrigued by the lawyer that mentioned that perhaps you have a law on the books already that prohibits uh, gas drilling in your area. I'm sure a lot of people in your town will breathe a, a great sigh of relief over that and you should get the word out for them. If not, uh, you have a little more work to do uh, and you'll have some time to go do it. Thank you. Thank you. I guess we better get some more people up here. <laughs> uh, I guess maybe that's, you're the last fellow. Do we have 80 through 81? 80, how many we have? 80 through 83 places. Craig Stevens, Silver Lake Township, I'm number 79. Uh, I'm here to speak for my neighbors in Demet who no longer talk about their issues because they were bought off by Cabot Oil and Gas. Um, there's a few people that are still able to speak. This is really their water. I have the test results here. I heard earlier about facts. I have a gas lease. I signed with Chesapeake. I allowed a gas pipeline to cross my property. Everything I've experienced in the last two and a half years is my own experiences. I have all the documents. I always carry them. Um, I'm concerned about an industry that signs 95 and a half year old women in nursing homes. That was my grandmother's experience in 2007. Uh, she didn't own the property. She was only the life tenant. 
I don't have too much respect for people who do that, no matter what the industry holds for us for riches. I'm, uh, I'm a constitutional conservative, so I'm not an anti-drilling activist, but I'm smart enough to figure out when, uh, when I'm being lied to and cheated, and so I like to point that out to people so that I come here, my mother is uh, from Oswego, I'm a fifth generation Oswegonian, sixth generation from Pennsylvania. When they installed the pipeline, they dumped 100,000 gallons of liquid of unknown origin on my property. I'd like to tell you I was lying about that, except for I have the paperwork right here, where after I called the state, they came in, and the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission and DEP, after me really pushing them, found out they really were guilty. Fish and Boat actually put five criminal charges against Laser for doing that. That's the same pipeline uh, that has the compressor station in Windsor. Five criminal charges. They charged them $20,000. Great, and the DEP is still in the process of doing that. They found them guilty finally after telling me four times on my property there was nothing wrong. My only problem is, now I asked them to fix my property after they collected the money. No, they're not gonna make anybody fix my property. They said they've already, um, they've already gotten paid and it's a closed issue. Um, endemic, I have the test results right here for this water. Lith lithium, barium, strontium. Three types of thoramium, I don't even know what that is. There's three types of uranium. Arsenic, five times the maximum contaminant levels. I'm not really interested in that showing up in my 180 year old property's water, I don't know about you, but uh, I don't want to win the lottery. That's the bad lottery. The worst thing you'll ever see is when a neighbor's water goes bad, no matter what the reason is. And endemic, it took two years for the neighbors to turn on their neighbors. Enough already started, endemic proud. They're liars, they're just in this for the money. Well, I live 15 miles from Demick, but I sure we got interested when the people had bad water and we figured out a way to get them good water. I still do that, I bought the truck, I hired a driver, I found a water source, why? I don't care what happened to your water. If you have bad water and you have a family, you should have clean water, so we make sure they get clean water. Um, it took two weeks in Franklin Forks down the street from me for the neighbors to turn on their neighbors. Don't let this happen to you, not generational suicide. Thank you. Thank you. Number 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85. Man, you should have okay. jumped, jumped up and yelled. I win. <laughs> All right, uh, my name is Rich Handel. I uh, live on Wilson Hill Road. I've uh, been a resident for many years. Uh, I do support the moratorium. Uh, I'm concerned for the clean air, clean water, of course. Um, it's kind of enlightening the gentleman just before me or whatever. I'm sure he's not paid to come down here and do this kind of thing to show it, uh, to get that out there so people can understand and make an educated decision on what we're going to do. Uh, we've already had issues in this area. We've had stuff like the Endicott plume. Uh, we've had uh, the chemicals, okay, that they put for the fracking, uh, why do the companies need exemptions from the Clean Air, Clean Water Act? Is it maybe because they're not going to comply? We can't see it, so we don't know if it's safe, and for how long will it be safe? Um, also, if it's so good, like this, the next greatest thing, uh, why, why do they have to spend so much lobbying? $726 million over the last 10 years, $2.8 million in 2010, just in New York alone. If they can spend that much lobbying, uh, makes you wonder how much the DEC might spend uh, in regulations and in uh, enforcing it. And I'm not sure like what everybody's hoping to get. Uh, if you're leasing the land, I mean, how much are you going to get? How much are the guys at the top going to get? Um, and why the rush? It's probably about money. It usually is. The gas has been there for millions of years. It's not going anywhere. It's going to continue to be there. Uh, I'd rather see us get this right, have it be safe if we do, in fact, do anything. And also imagine what the gas is going to be worth in, say, 10, 20, 50 years from now. It's going to be worth infinitely more than it is today. Um, if something goes wrong, who's going to be liable? Uh, is there money set aside for cleanups? Uh, also, the pro-gas folks, a lot of them say, you know, it's my property, right? I can do what I want. Uh, that's not always the case, right? Uh, nobody should be allowed to do anything that's going to be potentially harmful to others. Uh, things happen, uh, like with the water. Uh, smoking is a perfect example of that. 
uh, years ago, right, that was commonplace. Today it's against the law in New York State to smoke in public places. Why? Because it's a health risk. I think few would argue that the state got that one wrong. Please keep that in mind. Don't get this one wrong. And thanks for the time. Thank you. 86, 7, 8. Anybody else? Yeah. 89. 91. 89. Hi there. Thank you for this opportunity to speak to you tonight. My name is William Houston. I live in the town of Union. And I want to speak to you and in support of this moratorium. And um, the town of Union is actually, this area around here is a drainage basin. Um, what we live in is, a, you know, the Susquehanna River Basin is a very large uh, area. It's uh, thousands of square miles, I believe. And we live in, there's all kinds of little sub-basins around here. And this Shenango Valley sub-basin is actually upstream of my water supply. Um, and I urge you also to take action, because no action is not neutral. If, if you've been paying attention to all the t local towns that passed those JLCNY's re resolution, if you read what it says, it basically says, we're going to trust the DEC. It's a no action thing. But the JLCNY clearly knows that no action, trusting the DEC, is actually a pro-gas drilling position. So I would urge you definitely to take action. So here's what I've learned just recently. People talked about staying to the facts. Um, that place where uh, Craig Stevens lives, uh, he lives off of Laurel Creek. He's in Pennsylvania. Um, that's upstream. He's in my drainage basin. Water does not follow state boundaries. The Susquehanna River, which my water supply comes basically out of. My well is a shallow well that's influenced by the river. The city of Binghamton takes their water directly from the river, upstream of the city of Binghamton right now, despite the New York State moratorium on fracking. There are 98 unconventional gas wells right now in the drainage basin that forms the headwaters of the supply of drinking water for the city of Binghamton, 98. Now, I would like to give you today a visualization, and I have a video on YouTube that you can check out about this, but here's the visualization. So, and this is all fact-based data. Thank you. 4.3 million gallons per frac, this is the PA state average, times 98 wells 0.05% is chemicals. That's 8,500 tons of chemicals have been introduced into my headwaters in four years. That's 85 big 100 ton freight cars loaded. So I would urge you to please, to please take, take action and protect your town. You have a duty. Thank you. <laughs> I must have been the last. <laughs> uh, do we have do we have any ninety eight up to go ahead? I, we've lost track over here, sir. <laughs> uh, thank you for having the wisdom to hold this hearing in contemplation of passing a moratorium, perhaps a ban. I'm from um, Plymouth, New York. My name is Peter Hudeberg. Um, I, many of the issues, most of the issues that I would speak on have already been covered. I'd just like to read from this Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Alliance for Clean Water and Air. They put together this list of the harmed, um, uh, the sick and the dead and the disappeared. Um, although they're not a scientific organization, they are responsible citizens who have done their best to document actual occurrences of contamination and, in many cases, uh, disease as a result of those contaminations. 
So here's Pam Judy, Carmichael's Pennsylvania. She's 780 feet from a compressor station. Her exposure is air, contaminated air. Her symptoms are headaches, fatigue, dizziness, nausea, nosebleeds, blood, blood tests show exposure to benzene and other chemicals, highly carcinogenic. Daryl Smitsky from Hickory, Pennsylvania, gas facility, range resources well, less than a thousand feet away. Exposure, uh, contaminated water for, with toluene, acro, nitrile, strontium, barium, and manganese. Symptoms are rashes on legs from showering. Eight of his healthy goats have been killed. The fish in his pond are developing abnormal scales. Here's somebody from uh, Arlington, Texas. It's a nationwide phenomenon. Flow, a flowback jaw, uh, exposure, it, it was air, through the air. Uh, sick to her stomach, disoriented, and difficulty breathing. This is Laura Amos from Silt, Colorado. Four wells on her neighbor's properties, less than a thousand feet from her house. Uh, exposure of uh, contaminated water. Symptoms, primary hyper aldosteronism, a rare condition of a tumor, uh, adren of uh, adrenal gland. Here's Stephanie Holowich. Um, Washington County, Pennsylvania, gas facility, range resources, four natural gas wells, a gas processing plant, compressor station, buried pipelines, three acre plastic line, holding pond. A contaminant, she suffered contaminated air, her symptoms and her families were burning eyes, sore throats and other symptoms. There's no, there's no way that a town can uh, and exercise adequate control over the gas industry except through a moratorium and a ban. So thank you for considering that. Thank you. We're at 91, anybody else in the 90s? 95? Yeah. 93. Sorry about the delay. Hi, my name is Bill Lane. I live down the road at uh, 128 Cattellville Road. Um, I'm a mechanical engineer. Um, for the last dozen years or so, I've pretty much been working in the water and wastewater fields. In 2005, the company that I was working for at the time uh, put me on assignment out in uh, Pinedale, Wyoming, um, to build a new municipal wastewater treatment plant or to oversee the construction and startup of such plant. And uh, at the time, Pinedale, Wyoming was in the middle of the, at what time I believe was the largest gas play in the country. And um, I just wanted to let you know that I, when I got there, I couldn't believe what I saw. This is, Pinedale is a little town. I've been there, I had been there previously. It's, it's, it's a dreamland for anybody that's an outdoor enthusiast. But when the gas industry moved in, it just industrialized this little area, I mean, to no end. Um, th there, there were times when I would leave my apartment in the morning and I couldn't see the Wind River Mountains, which are right there just off to the west of the town. And when the concerned citizens of the town brought this to the attention of you know, those that are uh, the powers that be, the gas industry responded that, well, that's not our, we didn't do that. It must be the environmentalist 80 miles north of Jackson with all the SUVs that are driving that are, that are causing that smog. So I guess the main point I want to get across is I, I'm not a, I don't trust the gas industry. I, they, 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 they hire spokesmen. Um, they, they, they come from lobbyist backgrounds. I call them professional deniers because that's pretty much what they do. Um, speak just last year in Wyoming, Pavilion, Wyoming, go home, Google Pavilion, Wyoming, EPA, 2011, the town of Pavilion experienced two, 250 people in a town, small town. Some people would say, well, that's not that many people, but to those 250 people that haven't been able to drink their water for the past year, I think it's kind of important. Um, EPA Region 8 published their draft findings on that uh, pavilion incident in December of 2011. They found a smorgasbord of volatile organic compounds in the drinking water table. Uh, they're expected to issue their final report in uh, October this month. 
Um, they released a couple days ago, Bloomberg News and some other of the larger national news industries are, uh, have, have picked up the initial results which verify the initial findings. So in, in, in conclusion, I would just like to say, please pass this uh, moratorium and take some time to study this thing. Thank you. Thank you. 95, you got it. Mm -hmm. Frank Benici, I live at 300 Brooks Road. I have 31 mostly wooded acres. I'd like to thank the board for holding this hearing, for looking into the moratorium. I know it's a lot more than a lot of other towns have done. This is democracy. This is what we should be having. I'm very much in favor of the moratorium. I'm in favor of a ban. <clears throat> Great believer in people's right to do what they want on their own land as long as it doesn't affect their neighbors and their community. This does. Uh, I'm not going to talk much about the safety. Many other people have talked about that, and they've done it more eloquently than I could. I will say I worked and saved my whole life to buy my land and build my house in a rural area where I wanted to be. I don't want to wake up next year in an industrial zone. What about the noise? This noise is 24-7. It never stops. What about the lights? Again, 24-7, it doesn't stop. The tremors, the traffic. Can our roads sustain this traffic? These trucks are coming and going constantly. The crime rate, you can read almost weekly in the paper about the crime rate increase in the state of Pennsylvania. The DWI increase, astronomical. I live in an area where probably the majority of the people on my road don't even lock their doors. We don't need this crime. This town is quiet, it's serene, it's beautiful. Let's keep it that way. As far as jobs, have you seen the man camps set up all over Pennsylvania for all the transient workers that are coming in? Is that really bringing jobs to our community? I don't think so. What about wildlife displacement? You have problems with deer eating your lawn and your shrubbery now? Wait till, wait till they have no place else to go. I do put my money where my mouth is. I have solar panels on my roof, and I have a geothermal heat pump that I heat with. I don't think I'm doing my part. I don't think it's fair that I should be penalized for other people not. Thank you. <laughs> Any part of that piece? <laughs> I think you wrote that down. <laughs> it's real, I promise. Um, my name is Nicole Hanrahan. I'm. My name is Nicole Hanrahan. I'm a legal resident of 2754 Warren Center Road in Warren Center, Pennsylvania. That's in Bradford County. Um, my family recently bought a property within the last month at 93 Poplar Hill Road in town of Shenango. Um, I'm a refugee from natural gas drilling. There have been several people here tonight who have referenced um, the idea that people who graduate from this area move away and don't come back. I stand here as a graduate of the class of 1999 of Shenango Forks High School, and I'm coming back for safety and solace for myself and my family from natural gas drilling. I say natural gas drilling because it is way more than hydraulic fracturing. Hydraulic fracturing is one step in this process that has been hugely publicized, but the traffic, the preparation, the drilling, the cleanup, the moving of the equipment is phenomenal. I have personally been the subject of two accidents related to natural gas drilling near my home. One caused me to leave my home on December 2nd of 2011. There was an intentional spill of drilling debris in the natural game lands near my home in Warren Center, Pennsylvania, at the top of my hill in front of my home. I could not be assured that this spill would not affect my aquifer, so I left with my daughter to ensure our safety. I have a video at home of the second accident that happened this spring while my daughter and I were eating breakfast 
at our breakfast table on a Saturday morning and a water tanker flipped over in my front yard. This was a truck on its way, I was told, to a fracking site. I was told it was filled with fresh water on the way to that facility. I have not yet gained confirmation of that information, but I can tell you that there was diesel fuel spilled into the creek in front of my home. I have a three-year-old daughter who will be attending Shenango Valley. I want to put down roots in this area. I don't want to stay a refugee from natural gas drilling as it comes to New York State. I urge you to pass this moratorium and to pass a ban in the future. Thank you. I guess that will conclude. I want to thank everybody for coming and have a safe trip home. Thank you. Thank you.